In this episode, we're going to do a review of the Shakespeare Agility Bait Casting Combo. Stay tuned. Hello once again folks and welcome to Who's Your Back Outdoors. If you like any kind of fishing content at all, then you're in the right place. Reach down, hit that subscribe button, become a part of the Who's Your Back family. Also give this video a big thumbs up, hit that notification bell, that way you're notified every time we post a new video and when we have giveaway contests. We are gonna do a review on this Shakespeare Agility bait casting combo. This is a medium action six foot six rod. I'm not sure how well this will work. I'm not used to throwing a shorter bait casting combo. The one that I normally throw is a heavy action, seven foot six. This is a whole foot shorter and a lighter action. So that's the reason I've put some high visibility 10 pound braid on this. I will be starting off throwing a Guggenbaits buzz bait and I have the Shimmer Swimmer from 10,000 Fish on there as a trailer, as you can see. I got these in the mail from 10,000 Fish and Catch Co. just a few months ago, and I finally found a good use for them. I haven't had a chance to try them in the creek yet, which is originally where I was gonna try them, but we're gonna use this as a trailer today and see what happens. Now, before I get started, I'm gonna do what I always do with a buzz bait or any other kind of topwater bait, is I'm gonna take one of my spin cast combos back there and I'm gonna tie on a wacky rig. If you've watched this channel anytime at all, you know that I always throw a wacky rig alongside a buzz bait, a frog, a whopper plopper, any kind of topwater bait like that. And the reason is, if they miss that bite, you can toss that wacky rig in and those fish will usually hang around and look to see if something is falling through the water column where they smacked at it previously. Caught a really big fish one time doing this and I've always used this approach. So, while there's a big truck going by. <laughs> also, just for the record, I did not purchase this for myself. I received this as a birthday present. So since I had it, and it's been sitting in the garage for a couple of weeks, I thought this morning would be a great morning to go ahead and do a review on this. So I'm gonna get rigged up and we'll get to fishing. Looks like the grass has died and has sunken, which means that opens up a lot more possibilities with different baits. That's good. The water level's up also in the ponds. I found it hard to wake up this morning. You ever have the mornings like that? Shout out to Casey's, Casey's Coffee for making this morning possible. All right, let's review this bait caster. Really cool product. Now let's see if it catches fish. As I said, we're trying out this uh, 3 8 ounce buzz bait to begin with. And I have a wacky rig just in case. I see some shad moving on top of the water right out there. Pull on a duck direction, see what happens. The one thing about these, you don't want to throw them too many times in the same location. They just get used to seeing it and they just totally ignore it. I like the cast, not a bad cast. I've, I think it's mostly me. I have to get used to uh, the way this shorter, uh, more flimsy rod casts. We'll try down this section right here. I just can't get used to the casting. There we go. Always want to keep your rod tip up, keep that thing working right. Me and the guys I was fishing with yesterday said, 
we were talking about topwater baits and we said, you know, no matter how intense your focus is and how aware you are of fishing a topwater bait, you're still never, I mean never, prepared for that strike. You just, you just aren't. Okay, I like the cast. Cast is really good. And it seems like this rod and reel doesn't have any problem with this three ounce, three eighths ounce bait. We'll toss it right past this corner. Oh, nice little flip. Nice little flip, flips really good. Cool, cool. Another little flip. Flips really nice. The water is a lot clearer than I remember. We'll have to keep that in mind. Let's grab this. This wacky rig and take it with us. Yeah, it's a good idea to constantly move around with a buzz bait and really any topwater bait. Fishing edges. That's the move, definitely. Always make sure that bait's making a nice, nice sound too. Don't run it too fast. My advice is run it just fast enough to keep it up out of the water. Because I mean bass, they're just like us. They'll come a ways to get, you know, to get a bite. They won't come too far or too fast. They're, they're lazy like we are. We like McDonald's drive through They like it when it's hurt, disabled, or moving slow, even in the summertime. I'm not sure what gear ratio this uh, reel is on here, but it's pretty consistent. Pretty consistent, not too fast, not too slow. Let's see, six, two to one gear ratio with three bearings. And I'm not sure of the price of this. You would have to ask the person that bought this for me for my birthday. And I'll tell you what, I do like it. I'm gonna be bringing it on more trips. It, uh, the rod is a one piece. If you're wondering, the rod is a one piece. You would expect something that says Shakespeare on it to be a two piece, but this is not. I know a lot of you don't like Shakespeare. I've had two Shakespeare rods break on me this year, but I must say it was extreme circumstances. Definitely was. Nice little flip. Not too sure about the buzz bait today. I don't see much surface action either. So finesse might be the way to go. I, I really like the way this reel casts. The reel is extremely smooth. All right, one more spot to try. I just want to set the hook on one. See how this rod works, being that it's medium action. I don't really trust it, to be honest. There's one. Oh, I set the hook on it. I got the hook set. Hey, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> First buzz bait fish of the year. Get in here. <laughs> wow, what a hook set. Look at that hook set. Look at that hook set. That is awesome. That is awesome. 
<laughs> Let's take some pictures of this guy. There we go. Good, good hook set. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. First fish on the buzz bait this year. <laughs> we'll take it. Nice little bass. Let's let him go. Skinny belly. Beautiful fish. There's another one. <laughs> another one. This one's a little bit smaller. Still just as fun though. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Guggen baits. Works. Man, I love a buzz bait. Tiny, tiny bass. <laughs> Wow, I love top water. Love top water. Love top water. Let's find a big one. Now, I haven't had a problem with the hook set on these so far. I have not had a problem with the hook set. Those are two small fish, though. Trust me, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm they're fun, let me tell you. Any topwater fish is fun. It's fun when this pond over here starts producing, all that grass dies down. This pond here starts producing fish. Because you can catch them pretty much anywhere in this pond. All right, one more cast and we're gonna switch to finesse with this. Alrighty, let's go over here to the vehicle and switch it up. Well, so far so good as far as the action is concerned because I didn't miss uh, either one of those hook sets. So that is, that's promising. I wanna see how a hook set will work with finesse. We just got a small hook on here with a wacky rigged Lunker log. All right, here we go with the wacky rig. Not sure how this high vis line will do in the water, but we'll see. Ooh, I might really like finesse with this, being medium action. Nice cast. I didn't know if with that lighter weight on there, how that would do. But that's, that's pretty impressive. Now it's weird to switch from top water to finesse because it's like you have to condition yourself, your mind, your body, everything to slow down. And it's hard to, <laughs> it's really hard to. Kind of interested to see how this will do with a Texas rig on it as well. You may have to switch up to the Bandito bug in a minute. You can feel, you can feel everything. Of course, that has a lot to do with the braided line, but you can feel everything that you bump across in the water. Yeah, we got a little grass on it. There's one. Oh! <laughs> I whiffed, I whiffed. Might have been a bluegill, but it felt like a little bit bigger bite than that. <laughs> Got one. Got that one. <laughs> and it looks like I lost my lunker log. Yep, he'd been used up anyway. There we go. Not a hard time setting the hook. Not a hard time at all. These are the fish that will hurt you folks. <laughs> there we go. Nice little bass. 
on the wacky rig. Now I gotta run get another worm. We got plenty though. Many of you don't know it, but this spot right here, down this direction in these ponds is where I caught my personal best. It was the October before I started my channel in February. I caught my personal best right out there on a cotton cordell jerkbait. It was a six pound, 22 inch largemouth bass. And it just so happened my dad was here and he had come down here fishing with me. He was, he was visiting from Arkansas and he'd come down here to, to fish with me. Very exciting. I couldn't, couldn't have asked for a better personal best experience. All right, let's try this down through here. Oh, that's a lot longer cast than what I thought I could do, definitely. There's one. Oh, pulled it right out of his mouth. Pulled it right out of his mouth. Took my lunker log right off of there. You know, I should just bring those with me because I know I'm going to lose them. Okay, a little change in plans. We have thrown on the Guggen Squad Zinger. It's been a long time since I have caught a fish with a spinner bait, but the reason we're doing this is mostly just because we need to find out how well this works with a little pressure applied to it. I will probably also try a crankbait to see how this medium action rod, short medium action rod works with a little pressure applied to it. Oh, it'd be great. It'd be great to catch fish on a spinnerbait. I haven't in a really long time. The thing about a spinnerbait is you can run them really slow and they still have lots of action. Not too bad, really. There's a little bit of bend in the end of the rod, if you can see that, but definitely not the pressure I was expecting. I was expecting a little more. It'd be a little harder, but no, this is really easy to reel. Pretty awesome. Across this corner here. Nice cast. Nice, nice, smooth cast. Really nice. I'm going a little bit slower on this. Pulls really nicely. Pulls it really nicely through the water. No jerks, no ticks, no anything. That was awesome. Pretty impressed, actually, by the way. All right, we're gonna try crankbait and see how that works. All right, here we go, crankbaits. This is a Bill Lewis crankbait. It is a square build. Uh, shallow diving crankbait and I, I have fished with this once before and it absolutely moves incredibly through the water I think it's probably one of my favorite shallow diving crankbaits that's amazing action and the balance on it is incredible I think I found a new favorite crankbait that's a nice cast very soft landing and this this retrieves a little bit better than the spinner did to be honest definitely definitely retrieves better than the spinner bait now the reason i use a a shallow diving crankbait is because this pond is only eight to ten feet at its deepest see i was just at two feet there bringing it in and it was hitting bottom try to know or let's say if you get a pond like this to fish, try to know the body of water that you're fishing. That way, you know kind of which crankbaits to put on. You don't want a deep diving crankbait on a pond that's only eight foot deep because you're definitely gonna be dragging bottom and making a mess and scaring the fish and not catching anything. Definitely know your body of water. I really, really like the retrieve on this, this crankbait. It's extremely sensitive now let's just just catch a fish with it can we 
I'd at least like to catch a fish with it. Okay, here we go. I am going to put a Havoc Crawl on here in Watermelon Red Flake. I got a extra wide gap hook. We're gonna bump this around and see if we can get a bite. Texas Rig. This is a quarter ounce bullet weight, not pegged. See if we can get a bite with it. Nice, I like the cast. Cast is really good. Let me focus a little more on the retrieve this time. Let that sink. Give it a twitch. That's nice. It, you can feel the bait on the end of your line, and yet there's still a little bit of slack, which you want if a fish goes to bite that. I think it's the uh, flimsiness of the end of the tip that allows for that slack to stay there. A lot of fish will get uh, shy of a bait when they feel that pressure on there. So that's why you want just a little bit of slack in that line. Not too much slack, you want to be able to feel the bite. Caught a three and a half pounder out here last year with the same exact bait. Last spring, a lot earlier in the spring. It don't, uh, the cast, with being as soft as this is, the cast does not put a lot of pressure on your bait. I know a lot of soft plastics, you put a lot of pressure on the bait. The worm, the crawl, whatever you have on there is gonna come flying off. I do not like that aspect of some rods. Especially with that heavy, with the uh, heavy rod that I have on my other one. A lot of times finesse is just not an option. It's more of a frog, frog kind of lure, a frog kind of rod. Okay, well, the time of truth has come. This Shakespeare Agility 6 foot 6 medium action combo. It says 8 to 17 pound line. I have 10 pound braid on here, which I think makes a huge difference in the performance of this casting rod and reel combo. Gear ratio is 6 2 to 1. Three ball bearing system, plastic housing, as you can expect from something like this. The grips though, the grips, really cool grips. I like the way they work. They, they are just, they're, they're comfortable. They're the cork, cork grips and they're really comfortable. Gives you that extra length for maybe a little further casting. The final word of this whole thing is, I was not expecting very much. So here's my final word on the whole thing. I, I was not expecting much when it comes to this because I've had two instances this year alone where I have broken the Shakespeare rod that I have. Now, I didn't put this under a lot of heavy pressure today like I did those two, but I was not expecting much out of the reel. I was not expecting much out of the rod with it being a medium action rod, short six foot six medium action rod. But I will tell you, I was pleasantly surprised. There's not one bait that I tried today that I didn't feel the rod and reel were capable of performing with spinner bait, crank bait, wacky rig, Texas rig. Uh, we threw a buzz bait with it and caught fish with the buzz bait. We caught fish with the wacky rig. Didn't have any problem with the hook sets. So pleasantly surprised is what I will say about this. Uh, had my tension set loose, had my brake set here, about halfway between minimum and maximum. Didn't have any problems except one time with backlashing and that was that may or may not have been operator error. <laughs> possibly, possibly operator error. So I guess my final word would be pleasantly surprised. Is it worth the money? Well, I don't really know. You'll have to look up on Walmart for yourself because I received this as a gift. So I'm not sure how much it costs, but I'm saying with the name Shakespeare on it, it's probably within your budget. I do know that if I was looking for a rod and reel combo, I would not specifically go out and buy this one on purpose for myself. Now as a gift, now that I have it, I 
really like it and it will definitely when I'm going on some bass fishing trips it's definitely going to be in my vehicle when I'm going bass fishing because I like it, it performs well and like I said there was there was not one bait that I threw today that this rod and reel combo is not capable of throwing so far so good that's all I can say uh, we'll see because I'll be fishing with this some more in future episodes and I hope that you're here to see every one of them thank you so much for your time today I hope this was a helpful video and I hope you got something out of this and I hope you enjoy the channel if you do reach down hit that subscribe button also go check the link in the description get you some Hoosier back outdoor merchandise we have hats beanies t-shirts long sleeve t-shirts hoodies stickers everything you can imagine go down there and check out that if you want to support the channel you can purchase something from this website not only will you be supporting the channel but you'll be supporting a local small business here in my community also if you would like to support the channel there is a paypal link in the description feel free to help us out in any way possible next up we're going to try to get to the creek we're going to do some creek fishing try to get some small mouth on the line it's getting that time of year where it's getting hot and the creek is a good place to be because you're in the shade and you're waiting in the cold creek water thank you so much for, once again for joining us today i hope you come back and see us next time but until next time get out there and enjoy the outdoors we'll see y'all later mm -hmm.